So has India managed to battle coronavirus? Are we doing a good job of fighting this monster? Now I want to use some data to take a look at how we're doing right now. And effectively, this answer is split up into two parts. So the first part, let's take a look at the curve. And you'll hear this a lot. You'll hear flattening the curve a lot. So what is the curve? I want to put up first on your screen the curve of the United States. And you'll see right now as it stands, the number of cases are doubling every three days. And that's that really that spike, that exponential curve that you see. This has also happened in other countries. In Italy, for example, if you look at Italy's curve, that was also at doubling every two or three days. And that's something we don't want to see. Let's take a look at another curve. This is South Korea. You'll see South Korea managed to flatten its curve as it went down. Now let's take a look at India's curve. Now the thing is in India, it's still very early days, but you'll see that the curve is flat. Now, how did we manage to keep the curve flat? Now the first phase of battling this virus is really administrative. It's about the decisions the government makes to do what is called social distancing or to isolate people. Because when one person has the virus it comes and comes into contact with society and gives it, say, to six or seven others, each of those six or seven people give it to other people and so then you'll see that exponential rise. In India, our government managed to do several things on time and maybe a little before time. One, limit travel from people coming in from overseas very early. It also uh, quarantined everyone very early, screened people at the airports. Uh, we also had most of our state governments, and this is a question for both center and state, they managed to do something called contact tracing very well, which is basically uh, come, make sure that when there's one person who's tested positive, take a look at everybody else who they've come in contact with and test everyone they've come in contact with. That's called contact tracing. And we've done a fairly good job. And I must point out that this is both state and central governments that have done this so far. Some states have done it better than the others. As a result, as the ICMR said today, and the ICMR is the Indian Center for Medical Research, uh, have said that it's only those people who brought in the virus uh, from overseas and the ones they came in direct contact with so far who have tested positive, which is a good thing for India. They've said, ICMR has said that as of now, we don't see a sort of community spreading of this, uh, of this virus, which is a good thing because in India, that would be a problem. Phase one, administratively, we've done an excellent job. The government has made decisions to close schools, restaurants are closed, public spaces are closed. Some hard, tough decisions have been made to make sure that this doesn't spread. And so we've done a bang up job on phase one. And so we should be grateful to our governments for that. Now let's take a look at phase two. Now what's happening in phase two? The WHO put out a statement yesterday about how all countries need to be handling this phase. Listen to it. We cannot stop this pandemic if we don't know who is infected. We have a simple message for all countries. Test, test, test. Test every suspected case. If they, ha if they test positive, isolate them and find out who they have been in close contact with up to two days before they developed symptoms and test those people too. In fact, the uh, South Asia head of WHO, Poonam Singh, has actually said that India should be testing even more. Now, this brings me to the second part of this answer. The second part of this answer is about testing and about treatment. There are two ways to handle this problem. One is obviously the way that South Korea did it, and we showed you South Korea's uh, curve, let's pop it up again. South Korea did something called mass testing, where they just went out and for free tested as many people as they could. They had drive-in testing. People would drive their cars into this space. Someone would test them and they would drive out. So the idea was to test as many people as they could. America, on the other hand, didn't do uh, sort of mass testing. They only tested certain people. What are we doing in India? In India, I've had a lot of complaints. People have called me saying that they've gone to testing centers and they've been turned away. My colleague, for example, um, had a cold and um, 
I told him that the, the, the actual responsible thing to do is to go present yourself at Kasturba Hospital in Mumbai, which is the center, and get yourself tested as a precautionary measure. Um, that was me. I sent him. I take responsibility. But it turns out ICMR, the Indian Center for Medical Research, that's the regulatory body that's in charge at this point, and you'll hear a lot about them, have decided that we will only test those people with a travel history or if you know someone personally who's been tested positive and you've been exposed, then they'll test you. But a lot of people have said, what if I was sitting next to someone in a restaurant or in an office or uh, in a bus? Shouldn't everyone be tested? But that's not the approach that they're taking right now. Also, the test that they're taking or they're using is called the PCR test. It basically uses a swab to collect the fluid from the nose or the mouth and they test that for genetic information of the virus. It takes 24 hours for the results to come in. Also, you're handling the live virus, which means that only a proper setup with a microbiological lab can actually, and the proper kit it out, they need to know how to handle it so that it doesn't affect the people who are using it, who are actually doing the testing. Only they can do the real testing, which is why right now there are only 52 centers across the country that are doing this testing. They're all government centers. Now, the government yesterday has decided to open up the testing to private centers as well, but they're going to have to do it for free. Now, here's the thing, it's an expensive prospect. It costs the government upwards of 5,000 rupees per test right now. And the government's actually processing about 60 or 70 tests per day. They're working full tilt, but that's the capacity. The private sector I've spoken to said that it's important the private sector be involved. It's too expensive at this point for the private sector to uh, come in and uh, perhaps give it away for free. But there is a second option. There's a second test called the rapid, uh, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 rapid test that is being used by Korea. It was used by Japan. It was used by China. It was used now by Italy, by France, by Germany. This test is different. It basically, it's a pinprick. It's a little bit of blood uh, onto this test and it will check for antibodies uh, that are present in your blood that you're, to prove that your body is fighting a, the virus. It will check for the antibodies to this virus. Now, the rapid test is cheaper, it's faster. The, uh, the results come out it, almost immediately. So you will have them in a couple of hours, sort of like a pregnancy test. And you're not handling the live virus, which means that almost everyone can actually use this test. Now, here's the thing about this test. It's 80% uh, accurate right now. But uh, most of the people I've spoken to have said that it can be a good screening mechanism so it can be mass utilized and you can screen and then in the round two send people for the PCR test or the swab test that takes 24 hours. It will be able, you'll be able to seclude people better and uh, you'll be able to control this better. But the government hasn't approved this test yet. So even though the private sector has been brought in, the, this particular test has not been approved and so they can't use it right now. The other thing to know is that everything needs to be imported because we're not making the test kits in India at this point and so it will take time. Now this is where we are. Now two, three things we must remember. Remember we talked about social uh, sort of distancing where we don't go out, we don't meet people, stay at home as much as possible, listen to the advisories of the government. That's the first part. If you are healthy and you have nothing to worry about, you're just being safe. The second part of course is isolation, which is that if you are for some reason doubt or you doubt the fact that you may have been exposed or you've just traveled, then 14 days of isolation where you could just you know stay in a room by yourself, you just need to be given healthy food and monitored, that's the second type of isolation. And a lot of people have complained that they don't like the government facilities. And uh, some states like Delhi have now offered hotel rooms uh, you know, at about 3,000 rupees, I, I'm, under, I'm told uh, where people can pay 3,000 rupees a night and stay in those hotel rooms as isolation and be monitored instead, or they can use the government facilities for free. Now, the final stage is quarantine. Quarantine requires medical attention because it means you've been tested positive, so you're kept away from everybody else. Uh, you know, only proper people with like the whole sort of space suit type gear come in contact with you and you're given medication so that you recover. Now, the good thing about it is that it doesn't require uh, machines or surgery, so that kind of medical infrastructure is not needed, but we need quarantine wards. The government has done an excellent thing today by asking the private sector hospitals to start preparing quarantine wards in their hospitals. The one big question that's missing right now is who will pay for all of this? Effectively, will the government pick up the tab 
or will the private sector give it away for free because otherwise we don't want uh, you know the sector private sector profiteering on something like this or we don't want to create a system where only the rich get proper treatment and the poor do not because in case and god forbid we don't have to use it but in case we reach a point where we need a large number of beds they should be equal treatment for both rich and for poor so this is where we are right now um we've done an excellent job in social distancing we've done an excellent job administri administratively to keep people in their houses and uh, this hopefully should flatten out that curve this has bought us time the time that it's uh, that we've been given should be used for mass testing and for preparing our testing systems and making sure that we test as many people as possible so we keep that curve flat and we need to also be prepared with an adequate number of isolation and quarantine uh, facilities so that we can keep everyone safe so remember final note listen to everything the government is telling you follow those instructions stay safe